So we just got finished talking a little bit about why we indie published and um, what are some of the things that we did while indie publishing. Granted, we are not the only people out here that you can learn from. So we have bought to with us today an indie author who actually made it to the USA Today bestsellers list. So obviously she knows a bit more than we do. <laughs> so DC Gomez, we're gonna talk to her about self-publishing. Would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about uh, what books you write and how you got started. Hi, darling, like usual, a pleasure and an honor to hang out with you. You ladies are amazing. So I am a little bit multi-genre, which drives people insane. So now I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about that as well. So I do urban fantasy primarily. I do children's, I do devotionals, I do women's lid, middle school, you name it. I put a whole bunch of fun and exciting things. I do mostly, I focus on my brand, not so much the genre. So with my brand is you're going to get some quirky characters fun action, a whole bunch of excitement and some crazy madness of plot. So the brand itself kind of blends into that. As I told a lot of my readers, if you can handle all that, I'm your girl. When it comes to indie author, it's a little different because we tend to give advice to people who are starting out to stick to one brand, stick to one genre specifically, because it's a little easier to market. I know we're going to talk a lot about that. So yes. Okay. So let's get started with the questions that we're going to ask. Let me, let me get my questions. Hold on. <laughs> So how did you, no, mm, why did you choose to self-publish? When I started out publishing, I honestly, it became that question, do I want to go and query people? Do I want to go through the process of tradition? Do I want to do all these things? And I did a lot of research. I think most authors and most aspiring authors, we do lots of research. Sometimes more research than you can imagine because we have, you know, paralysis by research because we don't do anything else but research. One of the things that I consider was both the pros and cons of both. For traditional publishing, you know, there is such an awesome flexibility to have a really good publishing house taking care of everything. They're going to do, you know, the more, they're going to help you with marketing, they're going to do the editing, the cover. It comes with all that beautiful thing. And all you're going to do is worry about the fun part, just is write the books. I'm a little bit of a control freak because one of the things that the negative side is how much of a profit and royalty they're going to give you. You know, most traditionists, if you guys look online, it'll tell you to be between 15 to 20% royalty. If they're paying for everything, I can't hate. Let's be honest. You're putting a whole bunch of money up front for a brand new author that you don't know if it's going to actually pay out. I can understand that. Check the box. One of the things I found out is when Amazon came around, it changed the game. Absolutely. You know, publishing is free. Believe it or not, most people get that confused. Publishing itself is free. As any author, whether you're traditional, whether you're indie, here's a couple of things. You need to have a good cover because, yes, we all judge a book by its cover. Don't lie to yourself. We do. You need to have a really good story. I didn't say a perfect story. I said a good story. Have it edited well. It's never going to be perfect. So don't aim for perfection. And if you're aiming for perfection, you're never going to publish. So let that baby go. And then you need a good blur. That is the three things you need to play. Those are the starting prizes. Everything else is extra. So as I started looking through it, I was like, doesn't sound that hard. How about it going to be? By the way, I can do this. Because when you start out, you don't know any better. You're just like, I got this. <laughs> Why not? So it became the question, I can publish on Amazon. I can get 70% of the royalties. It is my book. You know, it is my company. So I started a company so I can publish my own stuff. Started doing some research. And then it became addicting. I got lots of control. I had an opportunity to work with amazing people like yourself that I can talk to, I can collaborate, I can bring artists into it and create my magic at my pace whenever I feel like it. That's an amazing reason. I'm, I have asked that question so often. <laughs> Why did you self-publish? Why not traditional? Why would have those answer? I've never heard that answer before. So, oh, uh, and I have what we have over a thousand interviews out there that we've interviewed for people. I've never heard that answer before. Aww. All right, second question What are the challenges and rewards of self publishing? Biggest challenge most people have to understand is you're running a business. And I think this is the hardest part for everybody. When it comes to writing and publishing, those are two separate things. Everybody should write a book. I don't care who you are. There's something magical and special. Everybody doesn't have to publish a book. That's a whole different story. So when it comes to publishing, and especially if you go in indie, you are your own boss. So depending how lenient you are is how lenient your product's going to be. So if you're just going, ah, I'll get done when I get done, it's never going to get done. I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. 
<laughs> sorry, you can, there is no magical wand that's gonna make that baby happen. So depending how committed, how dedicated, you are going to work like a business. And I think some people forget that. You have to hire editors, you have to hire cover designers. I do not format my own books and people go like, oh, really? I was like, why? I have an amazing formatter that can do magic and her stuff looks amazing. And it takes me all of like, hey, can you do this? Because for everything you do yourself, yes, it will save you money, but is it gonna be done well? And is it gonna save you time? Some things be okay to outsource. Just realize what you can and can't do. Be very specific. If you are great with graphics design, do your own covers, go for it, go wild. If your covers are gonna look like little stick figures, don't do your covers, hire somebody. Let's be honest. Why? People are judging it. So you have to be very specific. I think that's kind of the biggest one. You have to be willing to know that it is, you have to have respect for the business. You have to know all the pieces that come with the business and treat it that way. So the pros, you have control. If you are a person that wants to know how far you can go, how much you can do and what you can do in this business, it's amazing. You know, you are your own boss, which comes with goods and bads, but above all, you get to dictate how fast you're gonna publish, what you're gonna publish, where you're gonna go, and how you're gonna make it work. So it comes with those things, but it is still hard work. It is still the business and it needs to be respected as a business. You can't just say, I'm gonna throw this up on Amazon and make millions. Hmm, that's not quite realistic. Last question is how do you pick what you're going to market and or, or how you're going to pursue the PR for your books? Marketing, I think is probably the hardest part of the business that everybody has issues. Cause let's be honest, every single time you truly are seeing new books come up, you know, you're competing with thousands and thousands of books every day. So when it comes to me, because I don't write in one specific genre, my marketing is a lot harder than most people. You know, I have friends that concentrate on paranormal romance and pretty much they actually market by actually publishing once a month. They have a book coming out once or twice a month. So they play with the algorithm. They, they know how to do it. They do Kindle Unlimited. So I'm wide. So I publish everywhere. I think the control and freak came out. I was like, I don't think I want to give Amazon that much power. I love you. We're here. I believe in you. I just don't, just don't have that much being all my eggs in one place. So I tend to spread out when I'm going to market. For me, it depends on what I'm trying to do. So I'm changing my strategy to be very focused per series. So I finished my devotional series. So that's all I concentrated. Instead of trying to jump from one thing to another, I, I have 15 books. So when it comes to marketing, I have to be much more strategic or you're going to be spending a lot of money. I don't promote a lot of my first books if the series doesn't have more than three. But the simple fact, if you have one book, yes, promote it, be proud of it. But it takes a lot longer to make money when you only have one book because you don't have a lot of that follow through, you know, so it's easier for me to make money when I'm promoting my interns diaries, you know, that series has five novels, it has three novellas. So I can promote death's intern, I can do a special on it, I can give it for free, to, like directly on my site, I can do a lot of that, because there's a whole bunch of entire collection that people can pick up and go. So with the intern diaries, which death is number one, I have a free novella. So Constantine, the oranges of Constantine is free, it's free all the time this novella, which is really funny. I don't do a lot of promotions. Every once in a while, like I'll do something like, hey, you should pick it up. And it goes to like number one in this genre. You're like, why? Why is this cat this famous? But it's a really good short story. It's typical novella style, but it's action packed. It's great quality. It's free. People pick it up. And then you can see people picking up the rest of your series. So when it comes to the marketing, being very strategic, time of frame, time of the year really helps. So if you have a romance, think Valentine's. If you have a nice little cozy, you know, holiday, think November time frame. You know, you're looking at zombies. You're aiming for October, so you have to looking at you know what's a good beach read that nobody thinks about. Think of May. You can promote anything. I was never did not know that that in turn makes for a really beach book. I was like, really? Are you serious? People love it <laughs> because it's action and it's light. So when you're looking at it, you have to look at who's your target, where are you going to find them, what time of the year you're trying to launch these things, and how much money you want to do it. Most people tend to kind of focus on Amazon ads as well as Facebook ads. 
I recommend to people to be very careful, especially when you're starting out, because you can spend and waste a lot of money if you don't know what you're doing. You know, give yourself a budget, be strategic with your budget, but also realize that as an indie writer specifically for us, we're looking to build a tribe. So that's our goal. Your goal is to build a tribe, to build a community that is going to buy everything you do. So my readership is a fan of DC more than a genre. So I have readers that will pick up all of my books because they love me they love the style, they connect it. And then I have readers that are very specific. You know, all of my urban fantasy that will pick up, I have ones that pick up a little bit of emotionals, but they're connected to the brand. So, and I'm going to give you a business model that I learned the last couple of years that I love, that I kind of tell everybody, especially as an indie author. A lot of the times we think we need to sell millions of dollars to make money. So in reality, if you get 1,000 devoted fans, right? Just 1,000, not hard, to buy $100 worth of books from you each year, you will make 100 grand. The catch is, as an indie author, is how many books can you publish in a year to give that readership $100 worth? For us, honestly, you're looking at 25 books. Many of us are not going to be publishing 25 books a year. But what can you do to get your readership? You know, you can do anything as a subscription, you know, go to Patreon. You can looking at how do you build a brand? Think of audiobooks. Think of all those things that is going to give that fan of yours worth of $100 worth of stuff. I do merchandises. So when I go into events, great marketing campaign for me is live events. I tend to pick up amazing readers, but also my reader is going to pick up a book or they're going to pick up a t-shirt. They're going to pick up a bag. You're looking at that event to give you enough of a whole holistic picture to give you some money and to balance your entire craft. Because at the end of the day, you're running a business. So hopefully you are wanting to make money and hopefully make a good money out of it. Thank you so, so very much. Um, can you tell them a bit about your podcast? Because I believe that's part of your marketing. I have a podcast and I joke with everybody because when I started out, I just wanted somebody, anybody, one person to hear me about my books. So my books is Inside the Minds of Authors. It is dedicated for authors, whether you're indie, whether you're traditional, starting out, you have a whole collection. The goal is to give authors and readers an opportunity to connect. So we start out with everybody reads a portion of their books, whatever part they like. And then we just have a nice conversation. It's like you hanging out on my couch. But is the concept behind for people to go behind the scenes and truly figure out what makes that writer tick? What, what made them write this crazy little book of theirs? And actually be able to connect. So my goal is always to kind of give back to my community. My community has been amazing to me, has been super supportive. So this podcast is an awesome way just to kind of give back and connect with people. And I'm an avid reader. So I get to get inside tracks of new books I'm like. This is a win-win for everybody. Thank you so much, DC Gomez, for coming and speaking uh, to everyone today. Would you mind telling everyone where you can be found online and where they can pick up a few of those books and listen to that podcast? You can look at everything for me. You can pick me up on Amazon. I actually even have an Amazon Live channel that you can find. But from, I know, imagine that. I'm all about streaming, getting multiple sources of income. But you can find me on dcgomez-author.com. That's my main site. It can take you to a link to my Amazon page. You can kind of check out the books and kind of take a look at it. I am on Facebook, on Instagram under dcgomez-author. So people can connect and just if they have any questions, I am very grateful for everything my community has done. So if we can give it back and continue to grow, it's amazing. Thank you so much. And remember that you can find everything that your ladies are doing on www.andithoughtladies.com. We're going to get back to what else we can learn from e, uh, during the e-publishing. <laughs>